Jesus took on the robe of humanity. He took on the robe of our sins, right, on the cross. And we took his robe of what? A king, a son, right, a daughter, son, part of a family. We took on his position. But he made him. He didn't just put our sins on him. He made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Remember we talked about the cup? Yesterday we t or the day before we talked about the cup, how Jesus said if this cup can pass, it wasn't the beating, the scourging, the crucifixion, the whipping, the humiliation. It was our sins being put on him. It was him paying for our sins. And so he made him to be sin for us, right? But we became the righteousness of God in him. We became as righteous as God is in our spirit. That's hard to get your arms around, right? You look in the mirror. I look in the mirror and I see me. I see somebody who, who is flawed, somebody who makes mistakes, somebody who isn't consistent, right? I'm getting, I, hopefully I'm getting more as we go, right? But I'm looking at, and I, and I, am I as righteous as God? Is, can I possibly be as righteous as the holy, righteous God who created everything in the world? And the answer is yes. In Jesus Christ, our spirits are made alive, and we are the righteousness of God in him. The Holy Spirit could not live in us if we weren't. And so the robe is he took ours and we took his. And so when God sees us, what does he see? A son or a daughter. What, does he, what did David see? David seen Mephibosheth yesterday, uh, you know, our last session. What did he see? He see Jonathan. He seen the covenant he made, and so he at, ate at his table all the time. Amen. And so that's one seal. Let's go to another. Go to uh, John chapter sixteen, and let's look at verse nineteen. It says, "Now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him, and he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said a little while?'" and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me. Most assuredly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because the hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to a child, no longer she remembers the anguish for joy that a human being is brought or born into the world. Therefore, therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take away from you. And in that day, so what day? After the resurrection, right? In that day, you will ask me nothing. Notice what Jesus is saying. You'll ask me nothing. You'll ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken to you in figurative language, but the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but I'll tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, again, the church age, in that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I've come forth from God. I came forth from the Father and I'm come into the world, and again I leave the world and go to the Father. Okay, I mean a lot of reading here, but here's what he's saying. He's saying in that day everything is going to change. In that day, he said, you'll not ask me anything. He said, you'll ask the Father in my name. Covenant terminology. You'll ask the Father in my name, and he will hear you directly. He's going to hear, his eyes, his ears are open to you. You know, in that day you'll ask in my name, I do not say to you that I shall pray to the Father for you. Jesus is saying, you don't need me anymore. You don't need me to intercede for you anymore when it comes to prayer. He's at the right hand of God making intercession for us. But in prayer, we go to God, the Father, in his name, okay? It says, 
And in that day you'll ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray to the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you.